Let me go go work. So good morning, or yeah, good morning, because it's still like 10 something, 11 o'clock. And today is Sunday, and we don't usually work on Sundays, but it is usually one call nurse on Sundays. If you remember my call video, I kind of talked about that. But this Sunday, I am actually the one that is on call. So all morning I have been basically just laying down um, watching TV because I wasn't told that there was a patient um, running yet and basically they, they just call me whenever they have one. So I did just get the call or the text from my manager because I guess they had the wrong number that there is a patient that I need to come run and it's actually a regular patient but I guess they usually run four days a week so they are having they need to be ran today basically. So I'm about to get in the shower, get ready, head there, and it's a three hour treatment. So I probably shouldn't be there more than like four hours. Um, and if I have another patient while I'm there, okay, if I gotta leave, come back or whatever, then that's fine too. But yeah, so this video will be about my Sunday call shift. to come to the room and who has to be done bedside it we have like a list of 
floors and rooms that have to be ran bedside versus um, the room. So the list that's my, mainly bedside are ICUs or anybody who is unstable on high flow oxygen. And I feel like I have to talk about that a little bit, but um, like a certain units on the fourth floor, like the NTICU, some TCU patients if they're still on oxygen, um, if a patient is ventilated and have a trach and needs to be supported by the oxygen, they can't come down. Um, anybody with isolation precautions and so on and so forth. So yeah, the good thing is just my patient can come down and I will show y'all that because I am actually pulling up to the hospital now. come in um, now with my boots because of the ice and the snow outside and I leave my work shoes here. I've already come in to call back for call and now I'm about to walk into the acute room. So the light is already on and this is the machine that I plan on using. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Cause as I talked about a little bit in my, I think my last call video or just my video regarding dialysis in general, we have to let the machine rinse through the RO for 15 minutes before I can check the chlorine, which is one of the tests that I have to do during the beginning of a treatment. It always beeps like that whenever you start it. It'll stop eventually. So 20 minutes. So I'm actually about to go ahead and go downstairs to get a medication box, just in case I need it for my patient. Or actually they left this one, even though they weren't supposed to. So I actually don't need to go get one. Waiting. I'm going to do a hepatitis check on my patient's machine and I will have to print out yesterday's schedule so I can use that. So while I'm waiting on that machine to rinse, I'm going to write out my patient's order and the report that I got and make sure that I got everything I need. And if I don't, I just have to call the nurse back. But I've started to remember kind of having to look at the SR sheet, everything that I have to ask. So like about vital signs, orientation, pain, if they are like on a telemonitor or anything, respiratory status, um, and like if the room air on oxygen, if they have any lab draws, if they gave any medications, if they will have to come and bring medications for the patient, if I'm having to give blood, if they have any other procedure scheduled after dialysis and where their specific dialysis access is. And I think I got all of that, so I don't have to call the patient nurse back. I've been getting close to my hours. I think the previous week before this week, I had 36 hours and this last week I had 38 hours. And I mean, I could have stayed like a few extra hours yesterday if I had really wanted to, um, and took over the room for the, pet, the nurse who was on call. But um, so I'm, not, I'm not really complaining or anything, but I'm getting close to the 40 hours that I'm supposed to have. But it looked like every day our senses get lower and lower. Um, so I wonder how this week is going to be. So I showed y'all the pre-dialysis report sheet at the bottom, like the report that we get from the nurse. But then at the top, it just asks about like if they are acute kidney injury, so their um, renal status, their reason for being in the hospital in the first place. Um, 
if any they have any allergies transport um like if they are walking by themselves if they are assist if they have to stay in the bed their cold status isolation precautions which are twice um and then questions about covid like are they negative are they positive do they have signs or symptoms of it do they have any aerosol treatments that we need to know about and that's mainly for patients in bedside because we don't they don't come down here and do that and then basically these are kind of like repeat questions of the float sheet and treatment sheet that i'm about to show you so on here this is the section about the patient so like the patient's name the hospital we're at their MRN numbers, their patient number in the system, their room number, our date, and we usually put their birthday on top of it because even though we don't need it for this, we need it to put it in our iPad for um, the patient's treatment to bill to our company. Their diagnosis, so again, the reason why they're here in the hospital, the type of treatment it is. Usually Sundays are only supposed to be stat, but this patient I was told by the nurse runs four days a week, so Sunday is their fourth day. So, um, like routines that if they're being ran bedside in the ICU and the ER or in the acute room down here, if they have any isolation precautions, and if so, what is it? And then you elaborate here. So, like if they have MRSA, COVID positive, C. diff, any of those, their labs go here. Their hepatitis status here, cold status, allergies, and it was actually interesting because quite a few of our patients are actually allergic to dialysis dialyzers. So we have one specifically that we can use for them that they're usually is in their order already. And then here is about their access. And when we do our assessment at the beginning about the cardiac status, their respirations, their lung sounds, bowel sounds, orientation, their skin, any edema, pain, and again, their mobility and anything else. So like if they have any restraints or like amputations, arterial line, anything like that, I usually put down here. And then these are mainly about the machine and education. So like when we educate them about, say they're a new start, so we let them know specifically what dialysis is, make sure they understand what it's for, what it does, or usually on a regular basis, a lot of our patients are chronic or even acute and they're kind of used to it now. So we just let them know how long their treatment is going to be and how much we're trying to take off. And then in the, my other dialysis video, I told you we do 15 minute checks. So every 15 minutes we go and check the machine, their vital signs, um, and we write a quick small note about what the patient is doing um and that's what this is for and then again our post assessment which is a little less in depth but it's still in depth for us as nurses but on the paperwork it just asks the small section about skin lungs um pain edema and cardiac status we put our name here if we gave any medications and then the post treatment nurse report so it's pretty simple um a lot of it is like repeating like double writing it or whatnot so it's not that hard but that is what our stuff looks like and a lot of other hospitals especially the hospital where a lot of nurses travel over here for they don't do paper charting like this they all of their stuff is mostly in the computer so the only part of our stuff that is in the computer is we can go in and put in an order or change your order, um, say a patient doesn't finish your treatment or anything. Um, we can order lab tests if the doctor wants that. Um, hepatitis, we order that. Mainly that's the only thing we put in the system for the hospital, but we have our iPads where that's where we do the billing and we kind of fill out all of this information into there um, and any changes or delays or whatnot will go in there, so. Yeah. Now I'm about to go ahead and because it should be about 15 minutes and if not I'll start stringing my machine um, but I'm about to go ahead and get the machine ready so I can start bringing my patient down. And I didn't forget I still have to do my hepatitis check but I am actually printing off my patient's hepatitis right now and lately we have been having um, 
quite a few patients who have the last, same last name, so we have to make sure that we print off and have the right information for the right patient. that I need for my machine to come and get me your dialyzer. My patient orders for a 180 blood lines and normal saline. I am now about to get my PPE so I can come and test my machine because it has more than um, 15 minutes been rinsing um, and I will be back. Even though our patients are not isolation, we have to always have on a gown and so you have to get used to it after a while working with dialysis of having a pretty going on all the time. So my patient needs diacylate, which is also um by car that you line it in school as diacylate. And then the acid which is 2.25 And I'm going to rinse them, so I turn it off. Now it's time for me to put it in dialysis while I can And on here, I'm following my patient's order, so it's asking about the acid, which is 2.25 that I just showed you. And then the sodium bicarb. And the order is 136. So now I am sure to You want this up. So if you turn your head this way, you can read the lot number on the dialogue. Venus one and it's an arterial one. We work with the arterial one first. This goes in the bucket. This is where your insert this. This is what um keeps the blood flow going. It spins it through here. Pepper line. I'm not using it. And regardless, I will prime it, but for now, I can go ahead and clamp it. And then this is going to go on the bottom of the dialyzer once I prime it. So I have to clamp it. This is the arterial pod that will go here during the recirculation, but right now, I have nothing to do with it. This is the saline line. This will go inside the same do the same with this. This end goes in the bucket. Pass the venous chamber. Clamp that. Then this is the venous pod. I need to clamp that also. And this venous port goes on top of the dialyzer. Everything is where it's supposed to be. I am now about to prime it. So I have to put this inside of the saline bag. Which you can't see, but it's there. And you may or may not be able to see it, but the saline is running through the arterial. Once the bubbles are out, I 
that is an alarm because I am about to put my patient into transport. By the time that's done, the patient probably still won't be here. Um, and it gives me time to check other stuff in the room before the patient comes. So now I am about to go ahead and get my supplies ready once I open these doors so the transporters can bring the patient in. I'm about to get my supplies ready that I need in order to cannulate my patient. He has a fistula and I have to use a 16 gauge needle. It is now done with alarm tape, so I'm about to put it in research. Thank you. 